Good afternoon, everybody. It's excuse me. <laughs> it's February fourteenth, twelve thirty-four p.m., and you're joining Logical Excess. This is the Witcher Three uh, Blood and Wine playthrough, episode number five. And we've done some inventory management, and we've done inventory management, and we we've got more crown than we had before we have 3,444 crown thanks to visiting our friend Vivaldi show let's get going with the wine wars master Witcher, have you any news? Coronado's and Vermentino's troubles didn't come out of nowhere. Found evidence someone was behind them. Specifically, someone planted arcospore bulbs around the properties. That's in these letters. As for who it was... What do you mean, who? Him! And only him! You're mad, woman! Surely you hatched this plot and now seek to stick me with the blame! Calm down, both of you. I'll find the place the letters mention. We'll clear this up. Coronado's and Vermentino's troubles didn't specifically. What do you mean? You're mad. Calm down. I'll find the place. This vineyard, Belgard. Why is it so valuable? <laughs> you are not from here. It certainly shows. Before Count Crespi fell prey to the beast, Belgard belonged to him. As a man of wealth and influence, he guided it to immense success. Brought in rare grape varieties. Hired skilled workers. I shan't trouble you with unnecessary details. Suffice to say that merging Belgard with another vineyard is a sure recipe for success. Take care now. Master Witcher, have you any news? Solved your problems. Coronada and Vermentino can both go back to operating normally. What's this? Both vineyards? Why, that puts me in quite a bind. Then let me release you. Sell Balgard to me. <sighs> Out of the question. Quiet. Do not dare to start that again or I'll not sell to either of you. In light of the situation, I would advise the parties to form a partnership. What? You heard me. A partnership. That is my final decision. Now please, come with me. I shall show you your new property. Hang on. What about my pay? <sighs> yeah. A word once given. The job is done. The pay is due. Take it. Just a minute. You got us into this bind. So now you must come and see it through. I've a strong sense we'll soon have more work for you. Me and my dog did it, new partner. All right. Let's go. <clears throat> My desire for Belgard to pass into capable hands was no idle whim. For the vineyards fallen, I've been told of workers dying on their rounds. Monsters prowling about. Before anyone can call this home, they will have to deal with Nienses. That is the minister's wish. More work for me, I guess. It certainly seems so. But if we're to make anything of this partnership, in itself a difficult notion, we must be able to work without hindrance or threat. Will you help our fragile consortium? Yeah, I do want to help, but I do want to make sure I'm getting compensated here. I can help, sure, but I won't work for free. So base rate of 900, let's try to get, I don't know, a third of that? 270? If we can, this might be the upper limit of what they're going to allow. A bit less? Is 
That's out of the question? Two twenty five. Let's try two twenty five. A bit less. Okay, they're Is not that the having question? that. One eighty. A bit less. <laughs> Is that out of the question? <laughs> Hard bargain. 135. Fine. We I'm have a, a deal. I'm a dude that needs coin. More or less already agreed, I guess. Oh, that's a weight off my chest, I must say. Your reward shall be fair, I promise. I'll get to work. I'm pretty sure there they are. Wine Wars, Coronado, and Vermentino. It was not easy, but the Witcher managed to resolve the troubles plaguing the Vermentino vineyard. Pleased with a job well done, he headed back to Matilda to collect his pay. Geralt concluded that it would be unfair of him to help Matilda alone while leaving poor Liam out in the cold. Thus, he decided to resolve uh, to resolve the problems that Liam claimed had appeared at the Coronado vineyard. With this accomplished, and with the ducal clerk doing some prodding of his own, the two young Venthers concluded they would benefit more from striking up an alliance than from continuing their feud. Thus, they formed a consortium and continued to produce wines under a single enterprise name. Luckily, Geralt had faced and handily overcome far greater adversity in the past, so he easily solved the troubles plaguing Coronada. He then headed off to find Liam, expecting gratitude and a sizable purse. Yet Liam was, not in a, uh, Liam was not alone in requiring the Witcher's aid. When Matilda Vermentino approached him for help, Geralt could not bring himself to turn her down. Surprisingly, once the two vineyards' problems had been resolved, Matilda and Liam decided to form a consortium to conquer all their competitors on the Tucson wine market. Hey, we got a level! Let's see what we can do here. Firestream is kind of eh. It's kind of doink. Counting on you, Witcher. So good to see you, Witcher. All right, we have. Let's take a look. Wine Wars, Be all of the Belgard vineyards' problems. Belgard had been the jewel in Toussaint's crown of vineyards, yet since the death of its owner, Count Crespi, it had fallen on hard times. The ducal clerk had been tasked with finding a new steward, but only one who stood to restore Belgard's reputation and fame. The inspection yielded one conclusion. Liam de Coronada and Matilda Vermentino's newly formed consortium faced quite the challenge. And the Witcher, once again, had much to do. And that's good for me, because that'll be lucrative, I'm sure. And holy crap. We're way on the other side of uh, the Coronada Vineyard. Man. You know, for the sake of making sure I'm not missing out on anything. I'm going to go take some of these other lower level quests that are turning green now. You see this? 
Big Game Hunter, talked to Count Belladol. One day, Geralt happened upon an unusual contract notice. Someone was seeking the aid not of some unnamed witcher, but specifically of the witcher named Geralt of Rivia. The notice listed no other details, so Geralt, immediately intrigued, resolved to see what was the issue. So that means we'll set up... There's no notice board around here? Nice, got 840 crowns. There's gotta be a notice board around here. The days pass. The pile of work remains the same. I guess I'm wrong, yo. Come on, Roach. Let's go. No. What's going on there? Merkwood. Whoa there, Roach. Frank Alarks. There's no Get out. There we go. New marker Frankelards. <laughs> the Caroberta Woods are named after Toussaint's reigning Duchess grandmother, Duchess Carolina Roberta, who loved organizing elaborate games of hide and seek in this forest. A small trapper's post located on its outskirts has grown into the tranquil village known as Frankelards. Here, hunters, woodcutters, and beekeepers come to sell the fruits of the woods. The village springs to life once a year when Baron Trastamara organizes his annual wood festival and invites all the court out for a spe spectacular hunt. Whoa there, Roach. Bear with me real quick. I gotta run to the um, bio break. All things noble requires patience. Patrolling on an empty stomach, oh, dreadful. Oh, man. 
Okay, let's, uh... Here we are. I guess... You know what? Let's go ahead and uh, explore this whole town because we're gonna. I guess this is gonna be kind of like our little Lamet, my friend. It's area of operations to see here. here. Castel Ravello yes, Estate. What we have here: caution, knights errant, virtuous knights errant. I respected you as much as anyone in Tucson, but please stop attacking windmills. They haven't wronged you in any way, and because of your shenanigans, our maintenance expenses have increased many times over. I warn you, if you don't stop attacking windmills, I will be forced to lodge an official complaint with Her Illustrious Highness. Sincerely, Antoine Lys. Be warned. Beware, Cutter and Manor. Don't even go close. A kind stranger. I'm not even sure I know where that is. Cutter and Manor. Beauclair Oak Lumber for sale. If you're looking to buy some Beauclair Oak and don't mind if the paperwork's not all in order... I can help out. Ask for Felipe at the Rue Khan logging outpost. Organizing an expedition. Anyone who desires glory and fame is invited to join me at the Grand Palace. At the Grand Place. Grand Place? On the 17th of the current month. I plan to set out in good company and in search of adventure. We are sure to encounter many damsels in distress and have ample opportunity to help the oppressed. Tirman de Briard. Needed Master Magicker. I need a hard, high-need man who won't spill his sphincter at the sight of sorcery and can give a witch a good fecking hiding if it comes out, if it comes to it. You'll find me chopping wood near Fox Hollow. My name's Jacob, and chopping wood is what I do. All you poop-for-brain feckers who think you're jesters, I'm warning you, jesting's over. Jacob Woodcutter of Fox Hollow. Beware of monsters. Monsters known as bar guests have been spotted near the cemetery. All vineyard workers are thus advised to depart for home before dusk, preferably in groups. It is also recommended that they choose routes which bypass the cemetery. Failure to adhere to these safety precautions could lead to a serious consequences, including but not limited to mental trauma, crippling injury, and being torn apart and devoured. Well, that's nice. Bar guests. Bar guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, I should have. Look how many undiscovered locations this has opened up. Knight's Tales. Head to the pheasantry and put some meat on your bones. Herb store. Nettle, horsetail, nature's. Welcome, wanderer. In need of herbs, perhaps? Wart for a sore stomach, or? Prefer willow bark or iris root for stomach aches. Wart can cause dizziness, nausea. Forgive me. It's just that you do not have the look of one familiar with herbs. What looks that? And looks deceive anyway. Me, I'm not out for common weeds that grow in any meadow. Need rare ingredients. Can you help me out, or should I move on? You must judge for yourself. Meant no offense. And I took none. I should be the one to apologize for judging by appearance alone. I'm a witcher. We study Tell these me things. Your knowledge. How did you gain it? From an herbalist living nearby? No, from somewhere a long way off. Care Morin, Northern Kedwin. Gods, that's the continent's other end. What are you doing in Tucson? Same thing I do anywhere, killing monsters. Right, show me what you got. I think I'm topped out pretty much on all um, alchemy ingredients. Let's see, might as well check it out. Something I don't really, uh, I haven't been checking in a while. We got all these alcohests. 
Hey, a troll decoction. Look at there. Cleansing mixture. I don't remember what that was for. Let's play some Gwent. Wouldn't happen to play Gwent, would you? Okay, that is... Biting Frost is not good for me, and it's not effective against them. Scorch is. And this is just not a good hand, in general. Your turn. Should I be aggressive and try to win this round or try to catch him on the back end? Okay, he won this round. Let's say he won this round. Or she, excuse me. She won this round. We're going to try to catch her on the next one. I th even though I think I used too many of my good cards. Let's see. Gotta win this round, though. Yeah. Look at this. That, that I just had a terrible first draw. So I've got to beat a 20. Oh gosh, I needed that. But at the wrong time.
Okay. I played that. I guess I played it as good, I played that round as good as I could have, you know. Won by the skin of my teeth. Okay, that was like a reset button. In a plane not unlike our own, there once lived a ruler named Asgarek. When he was an old man, he fell ill. He felt that he would soon die, so he summoned an evil spirit called Marbas and made a deal with him. Asgarek would live until his son came of age and ascended to the throne. Ten years passed, Asgarek died, and next to his body, Marbas appeared and turned to the heir to the throne. Your father promised me something. Now you must pay for his debt. And just what did my father receive from you in return? asked the heir. And what do I owe? Your life, said Marbas, and cut the heir's throat with his claw. The boy had not yet died when Marbas opened a gate to another plane. Out of it came a mercenary army with the evil spirit Bareth marching at its head. Marbas sat on Asgarik's throne. Ill times had come to the land. The people rebelled against the demon's rule. Marbas sent Bareth and his army after them. Bareth slaughtered all the rebels. His armor glistened with blood. People began to call Bareth the Crimson Sovereign. Marbas appetite was not sated so he sent the crimson sovereign to conquer neighboring countries and so this went on for hundreds of years the sovereign continued his march losing soldiers as he went but marbos was never sated finally there came a time when the people of all the continents were united under marbos's rule and the crimson sovereign was left alone without an army he knelt before marbos and said you hired me and i have carried out my task you promised me a weapon from which no shield can provide protection you shall receive it, Marbos said, flashing his teeth. He reached into his garment and drew out a vial filled with plague bile. He flung it at the Crimson Sovereign, yet the Sovereign knew Marbos well enough to expect treachery. He opened a passage to another world and fled before the vial full of plague could hit the floor. Yet ill luck would have it that while he was fleeing, a gale came flying out of his open portal. It opened the window to Marbos's throne room and spread the plague bile out over the entire world. Ever since, Marbos has dwelled in a tower standing above a continent of dead bodies, and beasts transformed by the plague, and Bareth, still calling himself the Crimson Sovereign, wanders from world to world as a mercenary searching for vengeance. It's kind of an interesting tale. Mint, nettle, horsetail. Nature's bounty. Not quite sure how it applies to where we are now. Toussaint. Okay, well... <laughs> let's leave the vineyard and let's go talk to Count Belladal. Belladal.
which you can unlock. Land the throne around now. It's common knowledge. Every day the same. Wine, wine, and look like swaddling wine. It's enough to drive you betty. Beaver, booger me. Announcement from the Office of Internal Revenue of the Duchy of Toussaint. Matilda Vermentino and Liam Coronata have become the new owners of Bellegarde Vineyard leading to the consolidation of the lands of Vermentino, Coronada, and Belgard. This new ownership status takes effect as of the date of this announcement. Interesting. Diddly snips! My back ache something horrid! Southern? Mountains dry as a stockfish. in trouble of the spider kind need a maid with a broom not a witcher you fail to understand size of pigs or dogs black and hairy spewing webs mm -hmm. not talking about spiders then talking about arachnomorphs call them what you will you must smash the rogues will you those caves would be prime barrel storage were it not for the beasts No, let's talk about first money, bro. First, need to talk about my reward. Not far now, we find ourselves a hair from a grief. Not far now. We find ourselves a hair from a grief. Okay, okay. Not far now. Okay, dude. We find ourselves a hair from a grief. I knew we would agree terms. Arachnomorphs don't look much like bunnies, but they sure breed like them. Best nip the problem in the bud. I'll look into it. Clear the cave of monsters. Passing by Castel Ravello, Geralt came upon a vintner in desperate need of help. The kind of help only a professional monster slayer could provide. Okay, so let's get ready here. Arachnomorphs, so they probably are of the insect type of creature. So let's make sure we have insectoid oil. Superior. And they're probably going to poison, so I'm going to go ahead and down Golden Oriole. And let's go ahead and drink all these. Going is okay, we need that. Maribor Forest is always good. Blizzard. You make mountains out of mole hills, Vilma. That should be better than mine. I must insist, Count. You'll be much, much the safer with us at your side. Boulder Dash. Count, if I may.
ugly bastard. There we go. Cave is cleared. Any tidings? All taken care of. Went inside and cleaned up. Thank the gods! And you too, of course. Chuchot Cave. Completed. Wine trade. Been at it for a while? Not terribly long to be canted. I apprenticed to be an alchemist, but proportions were never my strong suit. So I took to trading in wines. More pleasant, I must say. One drinks on the job and no one ever complains. Makes sense. And the world's always a bit more bearable on a buzz. Was looking to buy something, maybe sell something too. Bro does not have a whole lot of gold. He's got a lot of runes. Gotta remember this. Diagram. Greater Strybog runestone. Do I already have these? Look at this. <laughs> Do 
These are expensive, though, man. I'm not in the market for this right now. i got to recover my damn losses. Is there anything he wants to buy? I don't know. I doubt it. Yeah. And he wants alchemy supplies. Time I got back on the path. So long. Chochot Cave. Let's go ahead and take a look at that log. A professional of the highest order, the Witcher quickly cleared the Chichot Cave of the dangerous arachnomorphs that had infested it. Contented, the Vintner immediately began to turn the cave into a wine store, though not before he had suitably compensated the professional who had helped him. Okay, so here we are. Let's yeah, meditate so we can potion up if we have to. Lads, I find your concern touching, I do. Yet I've long awaited this day. So, you must forgive me, but I shall go through with it as planned. Ah, it seems my guide has arrived. Greetings. Greetings to you, White Wolf. Uh, I presume you saw my notice? <laughs> Foolish question. You're here, thus you must have seen it. Forgive me, I should introduce myself. Count Belladar, a great admirer of your deeds. Thanks. Not something we witchers hear often. But Count, sir, do you mean to go off with just this witcher? A right hardy fellow he is, no ponce, I'm sure. But your expedition's too risky on the whole. And not taking us with you, pardon my saying it, right daft. You exaggerate, Vilma. I believe I can manage to survive half a day without someone there to wipe me arse in my stead. Hmm. My guards lament, witcher, but you must forgive them. Now, to get down to brass tacks, as you've no doubt gleaned from the notice, I have a rather extraordinary proposition for you. I'm a lover, Witcher, of nature. <laughs> a devotee of the wild. And Toussaint is home to several species not encountered elsewhere. I'd like you to accompany me on an expedition whose aim is to... Uh, preserve them. <clears throat> ah, yes. Uh, naturally, you'll protect me should the need arise. My ever-vigilant guards, see, will report any reckless behavior to my wife if I get so much as a scratch. And then woe will be me. Count Belladon? Famous poultry farmer, is that it? Uh, <coughs> well, that was my grandpapa. Dear man. But my trade is the wine trade. I import the finest vintages to Kavir, my homeland. The very reason for my frequent visits to Beauclair, uh, during which I like to uh, partake of nature, let us say. Really need a witcher to uh, partake? Got guards of your own. Take them, save some coin. I could, surely. But they too deserve a bit of rest, relaxation. Right, lads? <laughs> Besides, I've plenty of coin. Coin that needs spending. 
Who dares stop me? Ah, so this is about a rich man, bored stiff, seeking thrills. Well, there's also Clarissa, who... Vilma, please. Who what? Uh, my daughter. I always return from my travels with some souvenir or another. She looks forward to them tremendously. <laughs> but uh, we did not meet to chat about my family. We must discuss our venture, must we not? Need some details before I can say anything. Where are we going? What am I supposed to do exactly? In the roundest terms, we shall admire the local flora and fauna. And while we do, I might preserve a thing or two. Preserve? Of this device, see? Uh, a parastysomac. It, uh, it captures, uh, likenesses. A parasist of what? It's like a movable megascope, capturing moments, transforming them into illusions, based upon which I then paint a painting. So, you want me with you, looking at animals and flowers and... Well, that's more or less what it amounts to, yes. Uh, except you will first have to track down the creatures I wish to capture. I know only the very approximate locations of their habitats. Well, and, uh, should any trouble arise, we'll have your sword at the ready, right? So, agreed? Pretty unusual contract. I couldn't agree more, yes. And I'm prepared to pay a commensurately high fee. Don't mind if we actually talk about exactly how high that'll be first, do you? Why ever would I? Please, simply tell me how much you wish to receive. Uh, shoot for our magic 30%. Sublime! We have a deal! Jeez. Doesn't seem hard. Be glad to do something pleasant more. for a change. Sublime. In that case, here's your map. Before coming here, I dispatched requests to several local hunters. They located the habitats of the species of interest to me and marked out their ranges on the map. Good thinking. It'll save us some time. Won't need to track. Ready to go? Yes, let's. The light seems perfect just now. Count Belladol's map. Cool, bro. Very cool. X marks the spot. Oh, you've returned. Splendid. Wait until morning. The individual so intent on employing the White Wolf and no other was a certain Count Belladol, a nobleman from Covier. The aristocrat wished to embark on a nature trek with the legendary Witcher and my dearest friend as his guide. As the Count was offering an exceptionally generous fee and the job seemed simple enough in its nature, Geralt did not take long to accept the job. We shall await dawn's superior light and venture out then. Okay, wait until morning. Let's do that. This is a strange quest. Go out bird watching with this wealthy noble. Bird and beast watching. Seems I got the map, so I'll lead. Wouldn't rather be out here with those guards of yours? <laughs> you jest. It's deliverance to emerge from under their wings, believe me. They're overprotective. Uh, oppressively so. I wish to admire the wildlife. Preserve it. Not watch them kill it in a fit of misguided fear for my life. What if the wildlife attacks us? Then we shall have no other recourse. I do not wish to be something supper. For you, but as long as they remain calm, we've no need to provoke them. It's, it's of the utmost importance to me, in fact. Where's Count Belladol's map? I guess north is top. So northwest along in um in a um
excuse me, in a forest and in a mountain range. North West. Well, I don't see any mountains. Like we might need some beast oil if we get attacked here. Panthers. There we go. Says there should be some panthers around here. Grunting, Stay close. Panting. Keep your eyes peeled. Something like I've a bear. one request, Witcher. Avoid bloodshed, if at all possible. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, he wants me to avoid bloodshed. Okay, so no swords. Let me change my bombs. I may need to freeze some things in place to avoid bloodshed. senses are far more acute than mine. I must rely on them. An excellent day for capturing moments. Okay, so what do I do now? The individual so intent on employing the White Wolf and no other was a certain Count Belladol, a nobleman from Covier. The aristocrat wished to embark on a nature trek with the legendary Witcher and my dearest friend as the guide. Okay, this is... This is not good. What is that over there in the trees?
This is a weird quest, man. Like, I don't even know if I'm doing the right thing. What is this? Damn poachers. Snares. Looks like they were hoping for a bear. Panther got caught instead. Will you help the mother? Give it a shot. Gotta calm her first. Likely to lunge at us otherwise. Brilliant. You freeing her. A superb image. Content you share my love for animals. An excellent day for capturing moments. That's kind of an interesting place for a man of the city. I suppose I double in my share of things wine, nature. Painting. I imagine the life of a witcher must be rather more monotonous. With all due respect. It is. Never boring, though. Uh, I, for one, cannot fathom only ever consorting with the same creatures day in and day out. Got a wife? Y yes. What's that got to do with anything? Nothing. Just asking. Okay, I can't drink my water. Sounds loud and clear here. Must be near the nest. We're here. Well, this vantage point's no good. I shan't capture a good image from here. All right, wait. We'll find you a better spot that's safe, too. Tread lightly. Giant centipede sends the softest sounds, the lightest vibrations. You wake one up, it wakes up angry. Here 
here, maybe. Distance seems right. Light's not bad either. Yes, this will work perfectly. Can you lure them out? Give me a minute. Need to think. Vibrations. Gotta send some through the ground. I'll try tossing a bomb or casting a sign. And you watch out. Don't get any closer. Excellent day for capturing monkeys. Thank you. Truly magnificent. We can move on now. Exhilarating. Positively exhilarating. Thank you. I have one more request. Local peacocks performing their mating ritual. I'd love to see that. Apparently, a flock dwells not far from here. We can go. Just don't count on peeping at them while they mate. Season ended a month back. Oh, that's terrible. I so wish to capture their splendorous tails in full bloom. Is there nothing you can do if they prove uneager to present? Perhaps challenge them somehow? Goad them? What did you have in mind? Don't have a tail myself. I'm not likely to sprout one anytime soon. My thoughts were more along the lines of Witcher magic. They say you can exert influence over lesser creatures. Uh, yeah, guess I can try. Can't promise you anything, though. Splendid. Consider me contented. Uh, I cannot pinpoint the flow Using Axie. but a hunter I know told me a few likely spots. I'll mark them for you. All right. Let's go find some peacocks. I was wondering, why peacocks? My... my daughter is rather fond of them. There will be a treat for her. close. Eyes in the back of your head. A feather from the rump. Coated in suet. Cox shed it recently and the suet's got a distinct scent. Ought to be able to track the flock. A witcher in action. What a treat to watch. Hear that? They're calling to each other. Fabulous. We're getting close. Now, if they could 
Just spray the tails. See what I can do. Find a good spot. Ready? Use your magic, Witcher! Among the fascinating flora and fauna of the Duchy of Tucson, one also encounters creatures of the decidedly unpleasant sort, such as giant centipedes. Not only do these beasts look hideous to the eye, they can do colossal damage to the flesh as well. I decidedly advise against them a visit to Tucson, one of the many guides authored by Petterin Saffles. Giant centipedes are enormous, insect-like monsters which can be found in many places in the world, but are particularly common in the lands, or more precisely, under the lands of Tucson. There they often dwell in close comedy with Shalmars, for a sort of monstrous symbiosis has developed between them. Giant centipedes feed on the small creatures which eat Shalmar dung. Hard, chitinous armor covers nearly the entire body of a giant centipede. Sticking out from under this carapace are rows of hooked limbs. Giant centipedes are able to burrow into the ground with shocking speed, only to then appear back on the surface in another place. Once they select a target, they will circle it determinately trying to get close enough to deliver a blow. They attack primarily with their powerful mandibles, but they also possess glands, allowing them to spew acid. All over now. Whew, that was... That was... tense. Uh, I believe I've had my fill of excitement for today. What a wonderful adventure. Get everything you wanted? Yes. In that case, time to get back to your camp. Returning your lord to you, safe and sound. You've our gratitude, master. You see, lads? There was nothing to fear. Thank you, Witcher, for looking after our day count. Seems the jaunt did him wonders. Breathed some new life into him. Wait here a moment, Geralt. I have to fetch my coin pouch. Pay my dues. New life? 
He was feeling down? Made no mention, did he? Ten years back, his last Clarissa is her name. Took a spill off her horse. Been bedridden ever since. Cannot walk of her own. She'd been the life of the house before the calamity. A merry sprite what filled every corner with joy. Count would oft take her out on trips. She loved animals too. Excursions he makes now. Or rather, paintings he brings home. There's her only window on the wider world. Hmm. So now it all makes sense. Sorry to make you wait. I was dead chuffed to be able to observe you in action. To confirm for myself there that the tales about you were not exaggerated in the slightest. You showed discipline, reliability, responsibility. I dare say you'd make the ideal business associate. That's a shame you've no interest in the wine trade. One day, maybe. Your reward. Use it well. Thanks. I have one other matter I wish to broach. In a few days' time, I shall exhibit my work for some friends, my coterie, so to speak. Would you come by? Why not, if I'm in the area? Splendid. In that case, I shall see you at my lodgings. I'm staying with a friend while in Tucson, near a village named Frankelar. I'll be by. See ya. Counts ledger. Order for wine from Toussaint. Baron Arignoni. Two Farkins of SS. One Farkin of Pomino. Note if there's no Pomino, you can send Imbures. Nobody will know the difference. Master Boivar today. One Farkin of Fioranco. Three bottles of Ervalus. Note, take an additional Demijon of Ervalus for Master Biardve's wife as thanks for her magical ointment for Clarissa. Miss Lucinda. One Farkin of Carvanere. Eight bottles of Vermentino, two Dimijons of Coronada. Note, she hasn't paid for the last delivery yet. The excursion with the Kaviri Noble proved rather refreshing, though not nearly as safe and certainly not as boring as Geralt had initially assumed it would be. During its course, the Witcher was forced to fight giant centipedes to tame a number of panthers and attempt to control a flock of peacocks. In a word, he had a grand old time, while at the excursion's end, his coin pouch grew markedly heavier. Please, with the excursion and with Geralt for proving a consummate professional, Count Belladol invited the Witcher to attend a picnic he was host the very next day. Well, I guess there's some other things I can do in the meantime. Let's go ahead and try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in that boxing match with that dude from a couple nights ago where I just kept failing and failing. So we'll go to Plagueman's Bridge. And then right across the bridge, we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson over there. And then not 
And then, <laughs> assuming that I beat him, I gotta run to the restroom. Too sad. Too sad. Too sad. Maybe what I need to do is to prep, go ahead and just drink a bunch of potions that are going to give me the edge in combat. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Petri's filter, probably don't need it. Maribor forest. No. No. Yes. 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 Empty wine bottles, leftovers. I wonder what the old lady is fixing for supper. Can outsiders sign up, or is this a closed event? Piss off, rat mob. Hop, skip, trot. Mind your manners. Friends, this is your end, Master Witcher. You're gonna make me wait. There we go. Saint Lebioda sent you. I must now repair my wagon. They await me at the building site. So long. Not quite sure I understood what happened there. Was the guy being mugged or attacked? Or were they just a bunch of drunkard, rowdy workers? All is in order. Big feet to fill.
Uh, bear with me here. Sorry about this. Checking something out. Okay, so what is the catalyst? Looks like the markets are bouncing back. Not sure if anybody follows that. Dow Jones Industrial. It's gone green on the day, gaining 176 points. Big spike in volume. Good. It's a good thing, guys. Snapchat's making money. See if I don't have any capital to throw around right now, because I would definitely make a profitable trade here. Oh well. I was on the wrong side of the move earlier. You win some, you lose some. At least you didn't lose big. You know what I mean? That's what matters. See, uh, this statue quest, what is this? Big feet to fill. You know, I, I, you know what I'm probably I'm actually probably doing this quest before I actually obtained it. So 
Oh well. Okay. While we wait till the afternoon tomorrow, let's go ahead and do... Um, I don't know. Let's explore some undiscovered locations. How about that? How about that? Let's get back on the main drag. Faster. Go, go. treasure okay these look these are definitely beasts and they look to be panthers They're not Panthers. Our guests. Okay, I need to have Moon Dust, Specter Oil, Axie, and Eardin. Shun, shun sin, renounce foul deeds, and if evil threats to overwhelm your will, ponder the fate of the outskirts of Vizima. Remember the hideous bar guests which scourge them and repent. Servants for feasts and funerals by the Reverend Yeoman of Tretagor. Folk of simple or superstitious minds claim committing particularly rotten acts will bring down the wrath of the gods in the form of bar guests. Phantom dogs which stalk the roads at night. Even if this were the origin, Bargas saints and sinners alike would need fear Bargas, for they attack both with equal ferocity. Witchers rarely believe in the gods, but they do accept that Bargas exists and are always connected with some sequence of tragic events that happened in the past. Their explanation, however, holds that Bargas result from a curse or a concentration of ill will. So I've got the complete... I need moon dust bomb. That's right, the complete wrong... An Axie Specter Oil. An Eardin.
Alistair's Car- Carnar- Carnarvon's journal. 26th of July, unsure where to start a dig, ask the nearest old washwoman, or old men whittling by the road. They know everything. Yes, yes, I know. It takes a great deal of patience, and you have to separate the wheat from the chaff. But it's the best way to learn about local legends. That's how we came to find Fox Hollow, where they say the soil sprouts clay pots. 28th of July. We dug up part of a vineyard on the outskirts of Fox Hollow, but what we found there, those were no not pots. Those were elven funeral urns. It seems the village is built atop an ancient Ainsaid necropolis. That cemetery dates, by my reckoning, to the time before the first landing, so the graves might be full of valuables. The ancient elves buried their dead along with great wealth. We've already dug up a few choice baubles, but I'm sure if we look deeper, we'll find much more. The 12th of August. Today we started a new dig in a new location. Matthias spied a beautifully ornamented cameo in the ground, and when he tried to grab it, he discovered it was clenched in the hands of a skeleton. Anselm started to mock him, but quickly lost all desire to laugh. The valley was full of elven skeletons, men, women, and even children. The bodies were all mixed with lint lopped off. Many heads missing and children with crushed rib cages. What the happened here? 14th of August, another sleepless night. Blood, cries, wails. I awake drenched in sweat. Then I doze off for a moment and the same happens again. I told my fellows to dig a deep hole. We'll throw that cursed cameo inside. It belongs in the ground with the rest of the dead. 16th of August. Matthias disappeared during the night. No one saw him leave camp. His things are all in place. Anselm says we should follow his example and flee while we still live. But I, I cannot leave it like this. This valley is full of bones. Anselm screamed in my face, called me a madman. But I must tell someone what we have found. They say there is a group of archaeologists from Castel Grapion at the Termes ruins. Rest is covered in blood. The Curse of Carnarvon. 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 While seeking a bit of respite amidst the forest that covered the slopes of Mount Gorgon, Geralt ran into a dead man and a pack of Barghest. Once he had dealt with the spectral canines, he decided to search the pockets of the unlucky traveler. The Witcher hoped he would find something that would shed some light on the deceased's last days alive. The dead man proved none other than a treasure hunter. That, at least, is how I would like to think of and term him, for there is no honor in speaking ill of the dead. His notes indicated that he and some others of his ilk had dug up an elven cemetery near the village of Fox Hollow. However, they had dug up one jewel too many. When the feelings of guilt and shame had grown to be too much, and the expedition's members had begun one by one to disappear, Alistair Carnarvon, for that was our deceased hero's name, had decided to inform a group of scholars at Castle Gropion of his find. Graupin? I think it's Graupin. Said scholars, he believed, would look to the ancient necropolis and extend their care over it. Alas, he had never managed to reach the scholars and the treasures he had left behind in the camp were now ownerless. Okay, so that's a level 46 quest. That's pushing it. So we either stay on big game hunters or try to do uh, uh, Night for Hire or uh, Gwent. I guess, I, I mean, doing Gwyn is kind of boring, I guess, for the stream. I mean, there's one little spot we can explore here. Right here. Guarded treasure.
Yeah, see, that's Red Skull to me, so. Follow the green marker. is on the map. Damn, look at the skybox. More bar guests. Okay. I cannot handle a rock troll. At least we believe. I, th I think I checked on this before. So let's go around. Especially not a level 46 rock troll. This guy's gonna destroy me.
Order some bloody paper. Carlo, sending you another batch of hayseeds with big dreams of banditry. Train them well only, as only you can and send me the tough ones. Drown the others in the pond. Loth. Loth. Who saw night gauntlets? Codex of Loth half breed half breeds Hans. Codex of Loth half breeds Hans. We're ch we're chained dogs in russet rags, forced to stare into the manners of the rich and rot with jealousy. We toil in their fields for a few pathetic crowns. We've not even got a great war, no great tragedies. Our great war is fought against ourselves. Our great tragedy is our banal existence. This sounds almost like something from Fight Club. It is exactly from right cl Fight Club, so I'm going to read this again. We're chained dogs in russet rags, forced to stare into the manners of the rich and rot with jealousy. We toil in their fields for a few pathetic crowns. We've not even got a great war, no great tragedies. Our great war is fought against ourselves. Our great tragedy is our banal existence. Our elders raised us to believe one day we will throw off our weighty burden, but that shall never happen. Slowly we have come to realize this, and that has us rip-roaring with rage. Lost Hans gives those who join hit something in return it shows them that without pain without sacrifice the hans would achieve nothing that by joining its ranks they will get what they have always desi desired but to grasp this they must be ready to fight for their lives because when you come here for the first time you must fight red to green Oh well. <laughs> Looks like I got somebody coming to visit today, so I might have to end it at uh pretty at early. They're gonna arrive here around three thirty, so Need to make sure I got things ready for them. Uh, it's an hour and a 50 minute stream, almost two hours, like kind of what I wanted. So I think I'm going to stay a little s tight to the schedule. So give or take 10, 11, 12 minutes, however long it's going to take me to get to this next undiscovered location. And what is this? Gu ruined guard tower? Weathertop? Fort Astra Ruins. Why does that sound familiar? No, this place sounds familiar for real. Like, I read it in one of the little letters and whatnot I found in this game. Notes, letters from Bandit Hideouts and...
What the hell? There we go. I can't believe there's really nothing here. Now there's there is stuff here, but I was thinking more along the lines of like Witcher gear or bigger loot. Mahakaman spirits. come here during the day. You know what? This was not bad. I got a lot of uh, smithing materials. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. A chest. Tucson Knight's armor, Tucson Knight boots, and gauntlets, and trousers. Th that stuff actually may be better than my Witcher gear now. You can only change the color of items belong to Witcher gear sets. You can use the preview option to see how an item will look after you apply a die. To do this, select the die, press X, and then select the item you wish to die. Anytime you can use die remover to restore items or original color, so there's no need to be timid. Go ahead and experiment. Okay, let's see. Let's look at this. Did I actually do it? That's kind of cool, but I wish it would refresh the paper doll. Here I am, over encumbered. Drops garbage. Drop. 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 
drop. I really haven't picked up too much garbage. Okay, we'll drop. Ducal. I mean, this is a hard call. What I need to do is, I'm, you know, I'm in a new zone. I need to stash. <coughs> I've been keeping up a back, you know, a backup of Witcher gear, and I don't know if I really need to do that. Now I'm in a new area, getting new stuff. Sons of bitches, man. Wrong sign.
I can't do anything. These aren't monster nests that I can destroy. Or I don't have the wrong bomb equipped. What the hell is Roach running from? Okay, I'm going to get ready to um, part ways here. So, But I want to post up at this nearest fast travel lodge so when I come back I can quick travel get up. to this um, to the picnic. Really, I need to I've got an inventory problem, really, is what I need to... I need to deal with this. So... And it's mostly the armor. I don't need these now. They're kind of trash. You know what? I'm making this harder on myself. Exactly. Exactly. And I think... I think there's merchants here at Frankelar. And my phone is about to die. And I'm over encumbered. I've got guests showing up. And, um... I know there's a merchant here because I was here earlier, and I remember there was a uh, a smith. <laughs> there he is. Hell, I saved the dude. Move it. Guess this Chatfield. <laughs> What's up, armor buddy? Oh, 
dude. What sucked? You've been eating a lot. Mind showing me your wares? He's got a lot of stuff, bro. Sell one of those. Sell one of these. What else can I sell? I wonder if there, is there heavy stuff here in the other category? Probably so. Dimeridium shackles. They weigh quite a bit. So long. Unbeatable Barkins. Preferential financing from the At least on every armor purchase. Gone from my sight. Pretty damn hot. Oh crap. Uh, I'm gonna save over here, envoys, wine boys. I don't wanna miss this. But I gotta end this now because. So yeah. Um. Guys, this is going to be it. Two hours of Witcher 3. Um, Blood and Wine playthrough number five. Um, looks like we got a lot more done than normally, but not quite as much as our past three-hour stream. So, um, Next stream is going to be number six, obviously, but I'm trying to think of when I'm going to get a good time to be able to stream, and, and I'm not quite sure. But maybe... Tomorrow, I can't really guarantee it because I'm on call, really. So, and I'm going to have a guest over, so I can't commit, really. It's kind of hard. I'll tell you what, if, if I'm not called in early tomorrow morning, I'll be streaming. So, catch me then. Other than that, other than that peace out.